Hi, thanks for joining me in the video today. Pack your bags, we are traveling today. Sort of. Maybe soon. Today we are going to look at various types of EV connectors that are used in different areas in the world. The number of EVs has been growing over the past 10 years. Around 45% of electric cars on the road in 2018 were in China. In comparison, Europe accounted for 24% of the global fleet and the United States 22%. So if you were to travel across the globe, what kind of charging connectors would you see? Let's begin our travels in North America. EVs and plug-in hybrids in North America use J1772, also known as J connector, Type 1 CCS, Chatamo, and the Tesla connector. There are a couple other connectors that I felt worth mentioning, which are the plugless wireless charging, Avcon, and MagnaCharge. Avcon was the original version of the J1772 connector and was a direct competitor to MagnaCharge. MagnaCharge was used in cars like the GM EV1 and used an inductive paddle to charge the car. This is a functioning Avcon, but I need an Avcon to NEMA 1450 adapter to use it. If anyone still has one I can borrow to try it out, let me know. The charger that is here is a MagnaCharge, but it is missing the handle. So unfortunately, I can't show you what it looks like, but here is a picture of it. In 2009, the new standard of the J1772 became official, and now it's the one we use today. The current version of the J1772 can provide more power in a smaller form factor than the original. It can provide up to 80 amps of AC power. And as always, thank you Volta for all the free charging. The next improvement on the J1772 is the addition of CCS. CCS allows your car to DC fast charge up to rates of 350 kilowatts. If you look at the CCS connector, it is missing the top two lug pins of the J1772 connector since they are not needed. Since the power comes from the large DC lugs at the bottom, Jaguar, Volkswagen, General Motors, BMW, Ford, Hyundai, and a few others support CCS. Chatamo is a DC only standard. Current revisions in the United States charge up to 62.5 kilowatts. New revisions can do up to 400 kilowatts. The Chatamo is currently used in Japanese cars such as the Nissan Leaf and the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. One interesting thing about the Chatamo is that it supports bi-directional charging. The Tesla connector charges up to 80 amps on AC power and up to 250 kilowatts on DC power. The original Tesla Roadster has its own connector. However, the new Tesla Roadster uses this one. Only Teslas are able to charge from these connectors and on the supercharging network. Lastly, there is the plugless wireless charger. This is a plugless wireless EV charger and you just drive over it and the car starts charging. Um, it is an aftermarket thing that you get on your electric vehicle. Um, it charges three or seven kilowatts and only certain vehicle types can charge on this. On a side note, there is a third-party adapter called TeslaTap, which are Tesla to J1772 adapters that give you the ability to charge non-Tesla EVs on free level two Tesla destination chargers and UMC chargers, but not on superchargers. Now we continue our journey to Europe. They use the Type 2 connector with CCS and also Chatamo. The Type 2 connector is pretty neat. It allows you to charge using three-phase AC power. I wish my car could do this. The Type 2 connector charges at 3 to 50 kilowatts on AC power. They also have a CCS connector similar to the United States. It just has a Type 2 shape to it. With CCS, it's up to 350 kilowatts. The Chatamo standard is identical to the United States standard. The Tesla Model 3 now uses a European CCS charging system in Europe and Tesla has outfitted their supercharging stations to also have a CCS connector. Older S and X cars can be retrofitted to be compatible with the CCS standard. Elon, if you're watching this, we need this in the US too. Let's move our journey on to China. China has one nationwide charging standard known as the China GVT. The standard is both for AC and DC fast charging. The AC connector looks very similar to a Type 2 connector. This standard was released in 2015 and is now mandatory for all electric cars sold in China. International automakers have to adopt to the GBT standard for EVs sold in China. 
GBT allows fast charging at a maximum of about 240 kilowatts of output. This connector looks very similar to Chatamo as well. Let's take a quick trip to Japan. Japan uses a J1772 connector for AC charging and the Chatamo for DC charging. In 2018, China and Japan came to an agreement to develop a common new standard by 2020. You can view more on this project from the Chatamo Association. There is a lot of interesting information and graphics laid out if you wish to learn more. I'll link it down below. Alright, now that we have looked at some different charging standards, I wanted to also mention another type of charging technology, which is battery swapping. With battery swapping, electric cars can exchange their low batteries for another one that is fully charged. The purpose of this was to shorten the time someone would wait to charge their car. There is current research being done in China on battery swapping with high-use fleet EVs. The car company Bike plans to build several swapping stations by 2021 and the company NIO plans to adopt battery swapping technology for some of its cars. In the United States, battery swapping was abandoned in 2015 after Tesla tried it with one facility. I guess there wasn't any consumer interest to do this. There have been some drawbacks in this technology, but there are ideas in having mobile battery swapping trucks. Well, what do you all think? What experiences have you encountered with the different charging standards? Today, Kaya is reviewing something a little different since we are talking about charging connectors. We'll be looking at the Tesla Semi. Now I know it's not an everyday vehicle you buy to take the kids to school. Well, I mean you can, but I don't know how practical it is. So I want to quickly share a few notes on this semi before we get into its new charging standard. So this is a completely electric semi that consumes under two kilowatt hours of energy per mile under zero to 60 in 20 seconds with an 80,000 pound load. That sounds slow, but that's actually really quick for a vehicle of its size. It has four independent motors and has a range of 300 or 500 miles, depending on the configuration, and it's expected to cost between $150,000 and $180,000. All right, let's unbox this. Kai, do you want to help me? The Tesla Semi will eventually charge off Tesla Mega Chargers with a unique charging port configuration. Speculation is that this connector will allow it to charge at up to one megawatt, hence the name Mega Charger. Currently, the Semi is charging off multiple regular Tesla Superchargers while it's testing. However, once the Mega Charging Network is put into place, the Tesla Semi should be capable of charging up to 400 miles in 30 minutes. Hopefully, once these semis are start going into production, we will see the Mega Charger set up and learn more about it. Kaya, are you excited to see these on the road? What do you think? That's all for today. Thank you for spending time with me. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at Kaya's EV and Kaya's Tesla. Kaya's my dog. Check out my website at www.kaizv.com. That's all for now, and happy charging!